welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. And I would love for you to tell our listeners of Make Life Fun who you are and okay. yeah, what lights you up right now? What you're passionate okay. about talking about right now? Well, I'd say the thing that lights me up. So as I mentioned, I was a mental health practitioner, but in another lifetime, I was, uh, so my first degree wasn't in like mental health or social work or that. My first degree was in drama or theater, let's mm. say theater and education. So it was using theater, but not in the idea of learning scripts, but it was the idea of taking any subject and kind of like turning it on, on its head. Mm. So the idea of learning all kinds of ways of learning, right? So that the whole improvisational cannot, doesn't just something that you do in a, like in a, structured workshop like in, in, in a theater sense but also just in anything you know mm. like and so that's kind of informed how I ended up when I ended up studying social work I ended up working in schools but I really liked the mind body experience mm. using the body to calm the mind using the mind to calm the body and one of the things that I really discovered, and I discovered it when I worked in theater, but then I discovered even more when I worked, um, when I studied hypnotherapy, was that kids, and I include adolescents, but let's just say kids under the age of 11, just to start, they sense, they feel, they experience their world, and they visualize so mm -hmm. much more easily than adults do, mm -hmm. right? So an adult, if you ask them, can you picture yourself? tomorrow at the dentist well kids yeah like they can actually kinesthetically so mm. actually they actually feel it very easily it's not something they have to do they don't oh because their brain that's not fully developed well that's mm. the advantage so i would say that those are the things that light me up because when i would work in mental health i ended up always going through the mind body door mm. or the body door because i found that cbt cognitive behavioral therapy is great and it is considered the gold standard. But when you have kids in my office that were shut down and I'd get, take them on an inner journey, nobody was shut down after that, mm -hmm. right? Because so I think that that often gets underestimated, just the power of a kid's natural imagination so mm -hmm. that, you know, a kid that's bullied and, you know, he said, well, I said, well, where would you be when you were, you know, really happy? And he said, well, I remember when I went on a vacation and um, my mom said, you want to try this hammock? So we use that as a way to, to kind of enter into a space, into a headspace, right? Mm -hmm. So he's on this hammock. While he was there, well, obviously I'm doing my magic with the hypnotherapy, but what the idea is, is that I'm not, I'm not creating a script in my mind. He's giving me everything. And at one point he said, you know, relaxing here in the hammock makes me feel like I can solve my problem. Mm. And I thought it was so powerful because it kind of goes with the idea, you know, make it fun, mm -hmm. right? And that natural idea of playing. So here he was and he was just enjoying it and, you know, let him feel it with all the senses. And he was able to problem solve through it because he was so relaxed, you know, and I had him, you know, you feel the, the warm breeze on your cheeks. It's a perfect day really, you know, beautiful day, blue sky. And then he said, well, there's a few clouds. And, you know, but the thing is, is that he was able to immerse himself within less than three minutes. He was already there. So I think that that's the things that really light me up. I mean, I would say, because I think that it, it's something that it's a gift that you give a kid that lasts a lifetime, that they can take that and learn, how can I pull myself forward, right? Instead of feeling I have to conform to a norm, because that's what happens after age six, children tend to conform to whatever is out there, right? And if 
And I'm not saying you can't put your kid in a preschool program that's going to be structured, but that's not going to work for all kids. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. To all that. And what lights you up is lighting me up right now to hear you talk about it. Cause I see your face. I see the way you're just so fired up about this topic and this conversation. And I just think, how can the moms that are listening to this right now put this into practical use for themselves? Okay. Well, I would say that it really depends on what we're looking at here. If it's related to some, a kid that is, I'm giving you an example, right? Yes. Like they're anxious about going to the dentist. Mm-hmm. So the thing about kids, a lot of adults, mm-hmm. humans, is that you can't use logic when someone's stressed, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, think about it. Well, no, they can't think, right? So I think what I think I'm thinking right now, so I'll say what I think. <laughs> uh, but I would say that it's so important to obviously we want to validate, you know, how they're feeling, mm-hmm. right? That's really important. And so we're not minimizing and we're not denying or acknowledging the pain and letting them, you know, feel heard and understood. And then it's something as simple as what's one thing you could do how would you like to feel or what color would, what color is your worry? I'm giving you examples mm-hmm. here that just come to mind. It's not something like, you know, you so see, you kind of, you go with that and, you know, your kid could end up telling you, you know, like, I just feel really heavy in what part of the body. And so you're allowing them maybe to breathe in their favorite color. Mm-hmm. But what I say about that is that you're allowing your kid to use all their senses, mm-hmm. use and and it could be because some moms, some humans are more planners and, and they like, well, you know, but I need to know what to do step by step. So I would say rather than, <laughs> you know, what do they say? You have to have the plan before you go in the woods kind of mm-hmm. thing, that kind of mind. So they think, well, I need to know how, where, if I'm in the woods, how to get out. So I would say in that, in a situation like that, it would be more so encourage brainstorming at home. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, like some parents both moms and dads might say, well, you know, my kid just loves screens and they're just so into it. We can't get them away from it. And they're kind of is resigning. But if you can encourage to kids saying, you know, like I too, just say, you know, I too, you know, I find that hard to get away from screens. You know, I I tend to like, without even thinking about it, I go back on Facebook or I go and look at the weather or what's going on, you know, like whatever. And so you could say, what do you think we could do? Or do you think what I could do is that, you could have like a suggestion. I'm giving you the examples. Like yes. you could brainstorm like a suggestion box or a whiteboard mm-hmm. in the house. And let's write down all the things we could do instead of screens. And mm-hmm. anytime we have an idea, so we write it down and it could be an indoor activity, though I like to encourage outdoors as well, right? So it could be an indoor and then another one, another list is outdoor. Mm-hmm. And so then we add to the list rather than thinking so So I would say just that is already opening up spontaneity and creativity. Yes. Because you're not telling a kid, oh, that's a kind of a dumb idea. We're not saying it, but oh, that couldn't work. No, because the whole idea of a brainstorm is that we're not censoring. So Mm -hmm. we want to encourage our kids to be truly who they are, is that, you know, maybe your kid is going to come up with something. That's kind of, that's really weird. Like, I don't think that's doable. Just write it all down right? Have that brain dump. They are going to be feeling so encouraged. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I, this is a safe haven at home. Maybe outside they're telling me this, but at my home, this is how we do things, right? The other thing I would say is even if your kids, because we're talking, let's just talk about the screen thing is that you could say, could you remind me every time you see me (laughs) going here, but But not in the sense of I caught you, but like, I know, (laughs) but like, for instance, it could be, or that you verbalize. Okay. So I just want to know if dad uh, text us, right. Or I'm going to go and check the weather. Now, I think what it is, is that it's not, it's not shaming or blaming, but it's recognizing it like that kind of that thing that they were saying, right. The past two years, you know, we're all in this together. So the idea is that it's not like, my kid has a problem with screens, which we actually, let's own it. It's, it's hard. It's kind of like a lot of kids would think it's kind of like a must. It's not like 
a choice. It's like you, you must have this with you all the time, right? So I'd say kids mirror and mimic. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we know about our conditioning, our programming. So they, they mirror and mimic how we are, how mm-hmm. we show up in the world. So by allowing that this is a space, a safe space or a space we can explore. And then let's, oh, and he says, well, why don't we, can we make kites? So let's go out and find that out, how we could do that. How can we make a kite and where can we do it? And, mm-hmm. and I think what it does is it just allows that exploration, as I mentioned earlier, to just be like a free flow, like free, free, free to just have that free association experience mm-hmm. too at home. And I think then later, as they get older, then you can use it more in the sense that, wow, you know, like, let's just think of all the things that you could do to, what do you think, what else you could do? What else? And so there, yeah, I think what what I'm saying about that is that you're planting seeds of possibility. It's a seed you're planting and it grows. And what you're saying about it, mimicking you is so huge. And I love that you're speaking to like, let your child say to you, like, I see you on the screen too, because then it's a ripple effect. You're both working on it. You're both growing together. And I think that is such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Cause then the, then the kids don't feel like that kind of top down, you know, like do what I say rather than, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and that doesn't work in the 21st century. Yeah, It really doesn't. I mean, I don't think it worked in any century, but like right now it's like, wow, how can, I teach my kids so that my kid again is going to just feel more relaxed, Mm. right? They don't, their body doesn't have to be in fight or flight. Mm. If I say this, am I worried or am I going to go into, you know, like someone's going to like come back with, you know, don't talk to me like that. You know, you know, I I'm the boss kind of thing. And I don't, I, I, I would just think that it just gives a different, a different attitude. And it also is very empowering for the parent to kind of think, that it's not like feeling resigned, mm-hmm. you know, like my kids are bored. So they automatically go on screens. And I was talking to a mom the other day who said that her neighbor had told her because there was a power outage in the area where I live. And she said, the neighbor said, well, we were at a loss for what to do because they couldn't access their screens. Oh, and these were kids like four and six years old. And I thought, are you kidding me? Like, come on. Like if they were 14, 16, I could say, okay, I get it. You know, they've got all this network of friends and they can't text and it's, that's more isolating. And, but when you're four and six years old, come on, don't rely on a screen. You don't, that's not necessary. Like, let's trust that your kid has all those inner resources, right? They're just, it's so pure at that age. They're advertising the learning on the screens now. So like they have the learning tablets (laughs) what do you say about that well it's interesting because the learning tablets I mean that's a whole market right what they call it edutainment (laughs) which kind of is kind of I find that it minimizes how humans learn Mm -hmm. like humans learn as I said earlier about the play and then the mimicking and the mirroring through their parent through their caregiver it's not through a screen Mm -hmm. And it's hard to, you know, their brains aren't fully developed. So it's only, it's quite limiting. Like you could say, it's also because it's highly addictive too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that a lot of people don't understand. It's because screens, if we're talking, let's just talk about video games, because Mm -hmm. I worked a long time in mental health where you'd see like kids as young as six or seven, and they were watching restricted video like i'm talking about things that should be for kids or adults right but you know the parent oh well you know he likes it yeah well it doesn't matter whether he likes it maybe he likes chocolate ice cream and wants to eat all that all day but i think it's just that it's the idea that so screens give us this instant gratification Mm -hmm. right instant gratification so it's that dopamine the, the reward center in the brain so it's like high it's like just as high according to the research as pain like it's because it's they they do the brain researchers are kind of involved in video game um and so it's the idea of action reaction like i'm getting a result so what happens is that when you get over if you if you have your kid on a screen on a weekend let's say for four to five hours plus they're going down an addiction path because at one point 
they get overstimulated with the dopamine mm. and then they become desensitized to it. And then everything else is, bo is boring. Oh. So that's the boring part is that they don't really have much interest because it is so, so hyper stimulating, but it's not connected. So I'd say that that's kind of like wanting to offer a kid ice cream anytime they want it. And they don't recommend it. Like any <laughs> pediatrician wouldn't like, right. They wouldn't recommend that. And I think it's because there's, there's a lot of industry designers that create these things, but they're not really thinking about your kid and mm. the, um, the impact and influence. You want that the impact and influence comes from you. Yes, you're going to have impact and influence from the school. But if you can understand that you can shape a human being positively shape, right, by your presence, and then that ripple effect, like you mentioned earlier, is that then they, they can feel that safe haven, you know, like the idea of, so that we don't feel that then it becomes less peer oriented too. Because in the video gaming, it's also very, it's peer oriented, right? Like connect with others. But there's something about the hierarchical in a sense, not in a sense of power over, mm -hmm. but that someone else, I've got you. Mm -hmm. And that is the parent or the caregiver. I've got you on this road, right? Where you're, you could have emotions that are, you know, like things happen, right? On a schoolyard or wherever. And that, someone's there for me to catch me. And I think when kids get too much into the screens, there might be something there for the parent to look at. Like, what are the gains for my kid to be on the screen? Maybe because there's other things that I can do. And it's an easy, it's an easy babysitter, right? Yeah. So, it's, so it's, it's important to recognize that. And the other thing I'll just conclude on that is that years ago, TV was much more passive, but the video gaming and the screen use is much more of an interactive. So it can get you into hyper-focus and hours can go by. Mm, my gosh, so true. So true with that, with everything you're saying. It just rings so true that we are in this moment in time right now where we have our children that are hyper, like into the video games, into this needing the stimulation and being overstimulated. That part like you're saying, that's the part that's sticking out to me is that overstimulation and then their dopamine being so high and then they can't be bored. Well, they can't be bored. And also, so then, because, okay, so what's boredom? Actually, that might be interesting to find yes. out what the word boredom is. So what did I look up? I found it here. Yeah, I wrote it down because I thought, so there's different definitions, right? Uh, but essentially, it's lack of interest. They use the word doldrums, dullness, lack of motivation, uncurious. So if you're talking, as I mentioned earlier, about let's just say children under the age of 11, though, you, you know, you could have kids that are adolescents, but generally a human being that's still developing and hopefully all the way through the lifespan is that you can be a lifelong learner. But if you then feel that everything else is boring, it's because you've been overstimulated mm -hmm. in one way. That's not a good road to be on, right? Yeah. And, and also it's kind of it's restrictive in a way mm -hmm. because you're kind of thinking, well, this is my reality. And yet that's a brain that's still developing like yeah. with new neural pathways. So why are we restricting it? It's oh, possibilities gosh. and it's potential and it's way of being in the world. Right. And so I read a study the other day that said that by the age of five kids, their brains are 90% developed. Yes. That's interesting you say that because, so I took a recently, well, this year, a course as a social worker, just because just you have to anyway, and it was, <laughs> I did one on tech addiction. And they said that in 2019, so this is pre-pandemic, no shame or blame if you had to do this during the pandemic, but we're talking about children between age four and six, or even younger, let's say three and six, I think it was three, it was three and six that were on a screen more than an hour a day without any parent. You could be next to your kid. So it's interactive. So mm -hmm. it's not like we're saying never touch a screen. <laughs> but I think when it's more than an hour, what they noticed with kids between four and six over a year period in 2019, what they found was that there was areas of like a window of development that was compromised. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was a year in 2019. I know the study came out in 2019, but they said it was like the area of cognitive and language, 
was compromised. And those are windows of development because they didn't have that adult guidance. It was mm-hmm. just them and the screen. So those are things that we don't want to minimize because, yeah. you know, like it's kind of feeling, well, you know, that's what they like. Yeah. So they say that s- sitting is the new smoking. Right. Mm-hmm. So years ago, it would have been, you know, can't smoke. But when you're on a screen that long, then you become more of an indoor kid, mm-hmm. right? You're the indoor kid. So that, and so, so you're most of the time, if you're on a video, then you're my, a game and you're probably alone, just you, the screen, and you're seated. And so you're not getting sunshine or you're not being outdoors and you're not moving your body. So generally, if, if a child, or an adolescent is depressed or has depressed symptoms, the first thing they're going to say, an EMD is going to say they need to get outdoors and they need to do physical mm. activity in a group, right? So it's not just you, oh, well, he's going to go on some app and do acti- some physical fitness in the basement. No, no. <laughs> the natural world. Let's go touch a tree. Yeah, a exactly. In the grass. yeah, exactly. Let's touch a tree. So it's just interesting, all this stuff that just makes you realize, well, just to become more aware, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what can I do in my family so that we're not, it's not doom and gloom. It's just to become aware of, yes. of the impact. That um, is it. That is it. I read today, actually, it says choice is our power. That is the power that we have. And as parents and as advocate for our children, we got that choice. Yes, we're being bombarded with all this things, all these stuff. And people are giving us a list of what we should be doing, shouldn't be doing with our kids, but we get choice. And yeah. I think that's the biggest, like, that awareness. Actually, piece, that true. Choice. I would agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Josie. I think that is really vital, right? To feel that. I think that kind of goes with the opposite of feeling resigned. Mm. Because I think that that that's what a lot of people feel like what you're going to do, you know, he or she is on their screen, but it's kind of like, we can't do anything. Well, well, we still can do something. Don't feel that it's too late. It's Mm -hmm. never too late. Yes. We're talking about children. I'm not saying that you can't, you can do something all the way through, but then we're talking about, children who need guidance mm-hmm, it's not exactly. like all oh, it's, it's there because then, then people can use the other side of it what well, it's their choice they got to learn the consequences well first of all that part of the brain in a child is not developed so that mm-hmm. impulse control if and when thinking if i do this for five hours this is going to happen they don't have that so why are we saying they're going to learn the consequences well no that's mm-hmm. where you have to say very gently kindly the kindness we can mm-hmm. still win with kindness you know let's go outdoors mm-hmm. you don't want to be like super permissive and let them you know, do whatever they want and just be on the screen for 10 hours but the other side you don't want to be so rigid you're you know tightening the screws and you know, we're going to get up and do math tables at, uh, you know, 6 a.m., right? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's true, there are people that do that. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, 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 some people, yeah, they're very kind of, what is it, the tiger mom or whatever. <laughs> oh, like, no, thank you. Let's go out to the park. Yeah, something magical happens when kids are playing. Like, it is, it's so inspirational to watch a kid at play. They are just their minds are just so expanded. They're so, there's so much awe in just seeing it, I think. And so if the parent can start to, I think, look at that, look at that for themselves as the watching their kids play, it will start to inspire them too, to be like, we need more of this because it's like a two-way thing. Well, sure. Definitely. Actually it is because then it actually awakens your own inner yeah. child, right? Yeah. Well, let's have some fun here. Yeah, I think that thing about being watched actually is mm-hmm. interesting. You're mentioning about watching kids play because years ago, parents were kind of more hands off, right? So they, kids just time stopped, right? And kids yeah. were outdoors. And so then it wasn't so much like looking at and observing. And yet you, I notice I go by parks that there's kind of without generalizing, but let's say certain things I've noticed. Let's say you either have parents, the kids on those, you know, like on a swing or teeter totter or whatever, seesaw, and then the parents on their phone. So that's one. And then the other is 
the kid is on those structures where they can climb. Oh, you might fall, you might fall. So you, the ones that are kind of like too disengaged, but the other ones are kind of like over, <laughs> overprotective. So, well, no, maybe there's another way of saying that, you know, like instead of saying you might fall, why well, you might not. What's the next step? So as I say, it's, yeah, it's just interesting what, what happens. Some people feel that they really need to be there. And yet kids can also just, without any adult, they can just create something, right? Yes. And I love that you're saying like, take that next step instead of you might fall. I love that. I want to highlight that is instead of saying that, say, take the next step. Do you see that next step? Do you see where your hand is going? It's again, painting that picture for them. Yes. And actually, again, it's the idea of the encouragement, because mm. if you were to go on a tightrope, I don't know if you've ever done that. I've, I've tried it. Not easy. <laughs> but the idea is that when you're on a tightrope, the worst thing you want to do is to look down. You're looking to where you want to go. So, you know, it's the same as with when you're learning to ride a bicycle. I remember like it would just be look straight ahead. So it's interesting that like even the idea of some kids learn to ride a bicycle without training wheels. Mm -hmm. They really didn't need them, right? That just, but, you know, I think over many decades, all we need the training wheels. And yet, I don't mean that you don't need to have training wheels at all, because there's some kids that are on bicycles really young, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just the idea of trusting, I think, maybe like when mm -hmm. your kid is on those structures, yes, you have to, you know, if the kid is, is on a structure right at the top, and it's like a three, four year old kid. But usually older kids, like even when they go on recess, I don't know what it's like because you live in the States. I know some places they don't even have those kind of structures anymore in the schoolyards because they don't want to get sued, right? <laughs> I fell off the monkey bars. I'm going to raise my hand and say that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. Well, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. So the thing about that is that it's not like someone went to the hospital probably, mm -hmm. right? Nope. He fell. And yeah, so I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a real balance act. Right? It's you know? a real balance act. Yes, that's the nail on the head. It's a real balance act of no trusting our kids and trusting ourselves. <laughs> you said that perfectly. Yeah, and I guess it's also that we live in a society that kind of is driven by the fear too, right? I think mm -hmm. it kind of encourages well, I think the whole thing about, I'll just say it because I know that it's quite common these days, a lot of parents will think, well, I got to send my kid to this preschool because otherwise, you know, we're doomed. They won't. Well, actually, that's not how kids learn. Not all kids learn that way, right? Like, I think some kids can learn in that. And some kids are readers and writers and they learn to read early, but other kids are more kinesthetic, right? So some of those things are are not a good match, right? But sometimes people kind of, I get the impression like it's kind of like on that performance driven, academic driven. So if my kid gets to this preschool, then automatically they're gonna go to this elementary school, right? And then this high school and then this. So then it's kind of like thinking that that's what life is about, but we're not really connecting to the es essence of who this mm. kid is. That's another thing that, so then if your kid could be anything, that's where the idea of actually the brainstorming comes in because then allow them to let their imagination develop, right? Yeah. You never know, right? You don't want to let somebody feel that, well, you know, I became an engineer or a computer. I liked it, but not enough to do this all day because it pays well. Oh my gosh. So when you said that true essence of who that child is by spying, <laughs> I was like, yes, we need to elaborate on that. The true essence of the child and what they came to us as already perfect. <laughs> yeah. And according to their temperament, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, well, often, let's say, the child that you're going to have had very different temperament than yours. Mm -hmm. so you could be very task focused and detail focused and you know, I, I had one mom come, I thought it was kind of funny when I think about it, but she said, you know, I'm teaching my son that when he has to replace the toilet paper, he needs that the, the roll go this way, not underneath. And I thought, are you kidding me? Like, I said, oh. I, said I think he's probably just grateful that there's toilet paper. Like, why are we getting that way too detailed? There's even memes about this. Yeah, I know, but I just thought it was funny. But like, so what I'm just saying is, is that sometimes when you're like, they say, you know, the ladder is against the wrong wall, 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's even memes about this. There's a meme about you got to put the toilet paper this way. This is the right way. The correct way box. We're going to place ourselves in this box. There's only one way. And for <laughs> what I'm hearing from this conversation and what I'm loving is like, there is a multitude of ways to just be with your kids and let that unfold in its natural, beautiful way and still create some of that structure. Yeah. And I guess it comes with the idea of your podcast. Let it be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, now, that's not to minimize that it's challenging. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> with the big emotions. But what I've understood as a mother, it's more that really, it really is, even later on when they're adults, is that it's really the connection. Hmm. Connection is so important. And they use, there's a Canadian psychologist, developmental psychologist, Gordon Neufeld, who talks about connection before correction. And, you know, it's very easy in this world to be looking at all the things that your kid's not doing right. You know, like, well, he made the bed, but, you know, he didn't know how to, you know, tuck the sheet in, like all this crap. So it's kind of like to get away from that and to be able to really water the flowers instead of the weeds, mm. right? Like, like it's, it's that kind of spirit that a lot of us were programmed like even in school, right, where you would get a spelling test back and they would circle a big red pen. This is what you didn't do right. Instead of let's focus on the, you know, 49 other awesome. answers that were good. Yeah. And I think that we know that that is something that is so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. That it's not the negative reinforcement. You really want to be able to positively reinforce so that you get more of that. And so then, you know, your kid feels like, you know, like kind of like that campfire image, right? So that the campfire where you're stand, you're around the campfire and, you know, you can be in one section of the, the area, right? Where the, all the smoke is going in your eyes. You don't want to be that kind of parent when you're, oh my God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you want to be on this. Where... That's a great visual. So then for well now, rather than be on the side where actually it just feels really cool. I'm mm -hmm. sitting on this rock with a stick, ready to put the marshmallow in. And my kid's right next to me. And we're just enjoying mm -hmm. the moment rather than thinking, okay, did you do that? Did did this. And, and getting into kind of doing things that you probably didn't like when you were a kid. No one likes to be lectured to. And yet, you know, and so what are you going to be doing tomorrow? And I told you this, and I told you that. Now can we just enjoy the freaking fire and the, yeah. Anyway, those the are kind song. of my reflections that I heard from teenagers that would tell me that. <laughs> and the song, uh, Accentuate the Positive, <laughs> when you were speaking that, came to my mind for that because it's so true. And I love that you were saying it's not easy, it's practice. And what I say on this show all the time is, we are practicing something every day. So why not try it? Why not try it on? Why not practice it for a week and practice it for a day? See how it makes you feel and see how effects of it, because we're always practicing something. So why not practice something that's going to benefit the whole family? <laughs> yeah. And I guess it's also to give yourself some slack. It's kind of like um, just for today, mm -hmm. what can I do just for today? So it's kind of like, not thinking I'm going to give myself like this big job of transforming myself. Mm -hmm. So we, kind of, we give ourselves self-compassion, you know, we mm -hmm. were raised with, with a certain paradigm that could have been top down or behavioral focused. So then you want to change. So then how can you do that just by, you know, giving yourself some self-compassion say, mm -hmm. I'm doing the best. I'm going to honor myself with some kindness and give a friend my focus today is just connect with my kid. Just give them, giving a, giving your kid a hug for 10 seconds. So it's really like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, all the way up to 10. 10 seconds? <laughs> I know that's But so by crazy. doing that, there is something, it elicits oxytocin. Yeah, wow. And it's something that is nonverbal, of course, unless you don't have talk. Your kid, you are creating an energetic, positive imprint wow so that you just that feeling of being hugged and then your kid can then feel wow you know like no matter what happens my mom or there's dad's here mm -hmm. my dad they have my back mm -hmm. like they don't use those language but you know my mom they care because you know there's lots of children they're very naturally kinesthetic right so it's not all this you know yelling from the top of the stairs 
Did you, where's your running shoes? Whatever it is, right? It's taking that moment if 10 seconds. So that becomes part of a ritual, you know, and, and, and that's kids you know, in schools, whatever kind of school, even alternative school, they do have a ritual or they have routine. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is the subconscious mind likes repetition. So why not give it something that is going to create that energetic, positive imprint? Wow, you know, and I remember and then way off in the future, 20, you know, 15, 20 years from now, I remember when I would come in or wherever it was, my mother or my father, whatever, would give me a hug. And it just, it's, that's something that that's a gift that lasts a lifetime. Yes, it is. And you were speaking 10 seconds and counting the 1001, 1002. 1002. Well, I'm just saying it because some people just to get the idea that it's, yes, that it's you so can have good. An impact, impact in those, those little things. It's not like I got to like transform myself and turn myself into some kind of a humanistic pretzel that does everything right. I think right. it's best to become more aware wow you know i'm carrying all this stuff that i didn't like so what can i do and so i'd say hugging is a big one and the brainstorming will be mm -hmm. my second choice yep those are brilliant and i love that what i was saying about the counting is when you give somebody a hug you give somebody that squeeze then you jump out <laughs> you run away and i want to emphasize that count that holding it and really savoring it and making that lasting like imprint, like you're saying, because I know for me, yeah, even with my husband, just now before I got on the show, I gave him a quick hug and I'm, but I didn't think when you were counting it, I was like, oh my gosh, you really get to savor that moment. You get to savor. And that's a really interesting word because savor is something that is connected in positive psychology, like that specific school. I have the idea of when you savor something, it isn't just, you know, well, I was happy and now it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, so it becomes part of your, like the energetic imprint mm -hmm. idea. Like that's it. So that no matter what happens long into the future, let's say your kid is 21 and then they are 18, 19, whatever, is, is that let's have a hug. But then they have all those other mm -hmm. hugs, thousands of hugs. <laughs> So it means that they are actually giving them such a beautiful gift that they can turn around and offer to someone else in the future, right? I mm -hmm. was given those things. And those are beautiful, beautiful gifts, right? Yeah, beautiful gifts. Yeah, and, and, and honoring themselves. And so that's why I think that and the brainstorming, because then the brainstorming is also honoring them and their own creative mind. Mm -hmm. And with the brainstorming, what I want to elaborate on that for a second, because it's new to me, it's I've learned it and I want to pass it on is when I used to brainstorm and brain dump, I used to edit as I'm brain dumping. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then people do that because that's just the way people are raised. But by doing it this way, all ideas are welcomed. And you could get some kid making some kind of crazy thing that's poo poo caca, you know, whatever. And, and but you just, I think what the idea is, is that you create something like, like what I said earlier about the ritual. Then it's like, I think that's where kids make the shifts. Mm. You know, we do it because our family does these things. And my idea mattered mm. because we decided to use that idea, you know, and I mm -hmm. think it just, it's very different so that later on in life, when you're going into the world, you've already got another energetic imprint that's very positive is that, you know, what I say matters, not in the sense of being like self-centered and I am the one that has the knowledge, but more just in the sense that my ideas are not, we're not dissed. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I just think that allows them to begin to think outside the box. Yes. So that because you're basically teaching them skills for like, for instance, I don't know, like, let's say, for example, they'd say, well, I don't know what I want to do, you know, with my life, you know, um, that's very common, right, with young adults. And that's often for kids that were kind of like helicoptered and with a lots of extracurricular, don't get me started on that, but that, but actually, <laughs> so the idea of filling up their agenda with so much extracurricular doesn't allow kids to just be, mm -hmm. right? Just be. It's so human beings. And, and, and so the extracurricular is because then again, it seems very fear-based. 
if they don't have all this, and I know, because as I said, I work in mental health, around age 14, a lot of kids would say, I quit everything. I quit the piano playing, get the figure skating, I figured that whatever it was, figure skating and gymnastics seemed to be big ones though, because it was like, or the ballet, so those three. And I think it's just because the structure was there and some kids, it's, and don't get me wrong, I think all those things can be very beneficial. Yes, yes. But some kids just feel like, again, their essence, like, wait a minute, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I just go outside after school and can I just sit on my back porch and just watch the clouds water? go by? <laughs> but that isn't often honored in this day and age because people kind of, I think that's where the fear comes from right? Oh my God. Like even in the summertime, like I better get them into that program of the math, the engineering, uh, what's it called? The STEM, right? The STEM. So then people think, well, I got to fill up their whole summer with all this stuff. Oh my yeah. gosh. This conversation is brilliant. This conversation is so needed right now. This is the time that this conversation needs to go viral because we are going to help so many parents to know, to remember it's not to know because they already know it's to remember that the natural world is there for the kids to play in and we get to be the witness of who they are. And, and you shared so many nuggets and diamonds and all the goodness <laughs> on this conversation. And I feel so like good about this conversation. And I would love for you to tell our listeners how they can support you, how they can work with you, how they can get into your world so that they can learn more and be inspired. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. So I am a parent coach, but kind of like to call myself a family coach mm -hmm. because I can help parents. Basically right now I'm doing a, I have a Facebook group called Raising Inner Warriors, mm -hmm. which is also the name of my podcast, Raising Inner Warriors. And the work I like to do is also, if you have a kid that is struggling, then I can also work with your kid as well. Mm -hmm. So this is all virtual. My focus is mainly the parent, but there are situations, especially when you have young adolescents or some kids need to go on an inner journey. And, and sometimes a parent needs to go on an inner journey. And sometimes they both can go on an inner journey to just get out of like feeling stuck, mm -hmm. the stuckness of it all, right? Like we've gone down this path. How can we break through? So, so I have my Facebook group. That's just for moms. But you can also reach me. I'm at Anne Geraldine, and with an E, Anne Geraldine Barnes at, on Instagram. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I encourage you, Mama, get in her world. I'm in her world and I'm listening, I'm watching, and I'm implementing. <laughs> so don't just listen. Take this to heart and like really savor it too. And with this conversation that we just had, I love to ask our listener to share what's on their heart, what's on the top of their mind that they feel called to share. Like after having this conversation about letting your kids be creative and this conversation about embracing the natural world and being in that balance, we talked about so many beautiful things. So yeah. I just want you to, I kind of put We're a little bow on up, it. Right yeah. Mind the, the brain. Okay. <laughs> I would say there's so many things, but I, I would say what comes to mind right away is you as a parent are full of natural resources, right? And I, I feel that trust that, trust that you have a lot up to give. You have your confidence, your own perseverance, and all the things that you've learned up till now to this moment. And that trust that it's not just another book, because you can read a truckload of parenting books, but at the crucial moment, you can go back to your yelling at your kid, for instance. So it is really having a, a neutral party, a guide on the side mm -hmm. to help you on that journey, because you don't have to do it alone. You know, you have all that, but it's hard sometimes, right? Because you hit against your own programming yes. or listening to well meaning you know, parents, grandparents of the kids, your parents, right? If I were you, I would do this or that, right? So that's, that's what I would say. Connect with your own inner resources and get the support you need to be able to continue on the journey. This conversation has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Anne. Well, thank you so much, Josie. I think you've got the great drive to keep pulling us forward, right? 
<laughs> so there's no, you're not pulling up a boulder up a hill. You're pulling us forward with your mm. enthusiasm. So thank you for that. Oh, I will receive all of that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts, places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.